In the year 1868, amidst the chaotic and brutal Boshin War, Shizuma Origasa fought valiantly alongside his comrades from the proud Aizu clan. The battlefield echoed with the clash of traditional katana blades against the thunderous roar of modern rifles. Despite their courage and fierce determination, the Aizu samurai found themselves outmatched by the superior firepower of the imperial forces. Shizuma stood amidst the smoldering ruins of his beloved homeland, his heart heavy with grief and loss for his fallen comrades and the shattered remnants of a way of life. Fast forward to the year 1874, Shizuma had left the battlefield behind, navigating the bustling and labyrinthine streets of Tokyo in his new role as a rickshaw puller. Each day, he tirelessly pulled his rickshaw through the cacophony of the city, his thoughts consumed by the singular hope of reuniting with Sumi, his beloved fiance who had disappeared amidst the chaos of war. His quest was not just for her, but for a semblance of the life and honor that had been torn apart by the ravages of conflict. One fateful evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the city's lights flickered to life, Shizuma's routine was interrupted by the frantic plea of a young man named Takechi. Desperation marked Takechi's voice as he urgently flagged down Shizuma's rickshaw, setting in motion a chain of events that would intertwine their fates in ways neither could foresee. On another moonlit night, tension crackled through the air of a dimly lit street. The usual calm of the city was shattered as a horse-drawn carriage abruptly came to a halt, disgorging high-ranking official Iwakura Tomomi into the midst of an ominous ambush. Masked figures materialized from the shadows, their faces contorted with grim determination as they leveled accusations of betrayal at Iwakura. Despite their well-laid plans, Iwakura managed a narrow escape, disappearing into the murky depths of the nearby waters, leaving behind a scene of chaos and confusion. The next day, he found himself unfairly accused by two zealous policemen Come on now, dog. Come on, man. of complicity in the failed attempt on Iwakura's life. Determined to clear his tarnished name and uncover the truth behind the conspiracy swirling around him, Shizuma embarked on a perilous journey into the heart of Tokyo's underworld, where whispers of rebellion and shadows of deceit lurked in every corner. Meanwhile, Across the bustling cityscape, Kyushiru Shuragami, a man of sharp intellect and unwavering resolve, ventured into the opulent den of vice and deception owned by the notorious Doyama clan. His keen gaze penetrated the veil of opulence and deceit, exposing the intricate web of cheating and corruption that ensnared the city's elite. I got you, homie! With steadfast determination, Shuragami confronted the Doyama clan's thugs in a fierce battle of wits and fists. Let's go! Aided by his steadfast allies, a gruff yet compassionate doctor named Oguri, and a resourceful young apprentice named Aoi, who stood by his side in defiance of injustice. Takechi and his comrades plotted a second ambush audacious attempt on Iwakura's life. Unbeknownst to them, Chief Superintendent Kawaji of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police anticipated their deadly gambit. In a swift and decisive maneuver, Kawaji unleashed a hail of gunfire that incapacitated the assassins. But as the bullets ran dry and the assailants regrouped for a final assault, Shizuma, driven by the instincts honed through years of rigorous samurai training and fueled by a sense of duty, intervened with breathtaking speed and precision. With the grace and skill of a seasoned warrior, Shizuma swiftly disarmed the attackers and shielded Iwakura from harm earning a rare moment of stunned respect from Kawaji himself. Good job. Recognizing Shizuma's exceptional courage, loyalty, and unwavering resolve in the face of adversity, Kawaji extended a hand of opportunity, an offer not just of redemption from false accusations, but a chance for Shizuma to harness his formidable talents and contribute meaningfully to the future of a rapidly changing Japan. Meanwhile, across town, a mysterious swordsman named Shuragami walks with purpose towards the headquarters of the Moria clan, a powerful group vying for control of Saga. He believes that aligning himself with this growing force will pave the way for him to regain his lost glory. However, upon arrival, Shuragami is met with disappointment. The Moria leader, a man known for his cunning and strategic mind, sees no use for a reckless fighter like Shuragami. 
This rejection stings Shiragami deeply, and his frustration quickly boils over into rage. At the same time, within the bustling streets of Saga, a different kind of conflict unfolds. The Chindai, a notorious group of young men known for their unruly behavior and reliance on brute force, are harassing a worker affiliated with the Moria clan. Shizuma, a samurai with a strong sense of justice, witnesses the scene and feels a surge of protectiveness. However, Osanai, another officer by his side, throws a calming hand on Shizuma's shoulder, reminding him of their precarious position and the importance of avoiding unnecessary trouble. The situation escalates as the Chindai leader, a hulking brute radiating arrogance, throws his weight around, creating a tense standoff. Just as the confrontation threatens to erupt into violence, a sharp whistle pierces the air. A group of police officers arrive on the scene, their presence prompting the Chindai to retreat with grumbled threats. Meanwhile, back at the Moria clan hideout, the leader indulges in a relaxing bath. Suddenly, the tranquility is shattered as Shuragami barges into the room, his presence unexpected and unwelcome. However, Shuragami isn't there for pleasantries. He carries with him the banner of the Duyama clan, a rival faction. In a shocking display of brutality, Shuragami reveals that he has eliminated the entire Duyama clan in one swift attack, leaving a trail of blood and bodies in his wake. The Moria clan are left speechless and utterly shaken by Shuragami's ruthless act. While they cannot condone his methods, they recognize the undeniable strength and ruthlessness Shuragami possesses. This brutality earns him a grudging respect from the Moria leader, who decides to welcome Shuragami into their fold, believing his power will be a valuable asset. Meanwhile, in the confines of a prison cell, Takechi, the mastermind behind the assassination attempt on Tomomi, faces his interrogator. Mary Blackwood, a captivating English reporter with a sharp wit and an insatiable thirst for truth, sits across from him. She relentlessly dismantles his carefully constructed web of lies, her keen mind and pointed questions, exposing the cracks in his facade. With unwavering focus, Mary pushes to catch further, and a crucial detail crumbles under her scrutiny. A geisha, operating on the fringes of Takichi's plan, unwittingly provided him with critical information. This geisha, shrouded in an air of mystery, not only revealed Tomomi's schedule, but also procured the very pistol used in the failed assassination attempt. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Mary departs from the prison, leaving Takichi to stew in his anxieties. Her journey takes her to the bustling heart of Saga, where she seeks an audience with Hinazuru, a geisha whose enigmatic presence fuels whispers and speculation. Hinazuru might hold the key to unraveling the geisha's involvement in the assassination plot. The political tension arises with the arrival of Etu Shinpei, a former counselor. Unlike the violent tactics employed by others, Shinpei seeks a peaceful resolution to the growing unrest. His arrival sparks a different kind of fire, igniting hope within the hearts of the disenfranchised samurai class. These samurai see Shinpei as a potential leader, a figure to rally behind in their fight against the strict reforms implemented by the Meiji government. Their simmering discontent reignites, transforming into a burning desire for defiance. The warriors of Saga begin to gather, their numbers steadily growing as their resolve strengthens. Oblivious to the brewing rebellion, the Chindai continue their reign of petty terror. This time, their target is a local theater, where their disruptive behavior disrupts the performance and throws the audience into a frenzy. Luckily, Shizuma intervenes, who arrives at the theater alongside Osanai. While Osanai appears helpless in the face of the Chindai's aggression, Shizuma steps forward. With a display of exceptional swordsmanship, honed through years of training, Shizuma effortlessly defeats the Chindai, earning thunderous applause from the grateful audience. The subdued Chindai are promptly apprehended and thrown into jail. In the Moria clan hideout, where workers vent their frustrations about the ongoing harassment, they urge their leader to take action and halt the construction project, demanding revenge against the Chindai. The Moria leader, however, remains unfazed by their pleas. However, Shuragami observes the exchange with keen interest. He sees an opportunity to prove his worth to the Moria clan and repay them for their acceptance. Shuragami approaches the leader, proposing himself as the solution to the Chindai problem. The leader, 
intrigued by this proposition, agrees to let Shuragami handle the situation. Emboldened by their leader's past encounter with Shizuma, the Chindai, fueled by arrogance and a thirst for revenge, launch a brazen attack on the police barracks. Their goal was to free one of their own apprehended by the law. Chaos erupts as the Chindai, a mob of rowdy young men, storm the building, their shouts echoing through the streets. Meanwhile, within the barracks, an elderly woman, her face etched with worry, approaches Shizuma. In hushed tones, she informs him of the ongoing attack, her voice trembling with fear. Wasting no time, Shizuma sets off to defend the police station, his samurai spirit burning bright with a sense of duty. On his way, however, Shizuma encounters a fresh wave of Chindai reinforcements, their numbers far exceeding his own. Cornered and outnumbered, Shizuma braces himself for a fight, his hand instinctively gripping the hilt of his sword. Just as the situation seems dire, a blur of movement catches his eye. It's Shuragami, his face grim and determined. With a silent exchange, the two warriors stand back to back, a formidable force against the encroaching Chindai. Shuragami's blade flashes in the sunlight, a lethal dance of steel against the Chindai's crude weapons. Shizuma, a master swordsman himself, fights with controlled power and precision, his movements a testament to years of rigorous training. The combined might of Shizuma and Shuragami proves overwhelming. The Chindai, initially confident in their numbers, are quickly overwhelmed. One by one, they fall victim to the swift and deadly strikes of the two warriors. Inside the barracks, Osanai and his fellow officers fight valiantly alongside the remaining police force. Though outnumbered, they display unwavering courage, defending their position with grit and determination. The clash between the police and the Chindai is brutal. Just as it seems the Chindai might overwhelm the police defense, Shizuma steps forward, his eyes blazing with resolve. Having subdued the reinforcements outside, he enters the barracks. The Chindai leader, a hulking brute who had previously clashed with Shizuma, confronts him once again. This time, however, the outcome is different. Shizuma, fueled by his righteous fury and honed skills, easily disarms the Chindai leader with a swift maneuver. Borrowing Osanai's sword, Shizuma holds the point against the Chindai leader. Defeated and humiliated, all of them surrenders themselves. Suddenly, the sound of approaching horse pierces the air. Superintendent Kawaji, the head of the police force, arrives at the scene alongside the Chindai's supervisor. With a stern expression, Kawaji orders both sides to stand down, emphasizing the need for unity as the looming rebellion approaches. Taking advantage of the commotion, Shuragami melts back into the shadows, his work done. He disappears without a word, leaving Shizuma and the police to deal with the aftermath of the battle. One night, a well-dressed nobleman is enjoying an evening stroll when a woman approaches him. As they converse, a shadowy figure emerges from behind the woman. With lightning speed, the accomplice throws a cloth over the woman's head, effectively blinding her. Disoriented and terrified, the woman awakens in the heart of a dense forest. The first thing that registers in her muddled mind is a horrific sight of a severed head lying on the damp ground. Panic surges through her veins, and she scrambles to her feet, fleeing blindly through the woods. Two figures, shrouded in darkness and wearing masks, materialize from the trees. Before she can escape, they strike. Two sharp blades find their mark, and the woman's desperate struggle for survival comes to a tragic end. The sounds of the struggle reach the ears of Shizuma, a samurai known for his keen senses and unwavering sense of justice. Drawn by the commotion, he rushes towards the source of the screams, determined to intervene. Upon arriving at the scene, Shizuma finds not a violent crime in progress, but a seemingly harmless interaction between an elderly woman and a merchant selling secondhand clothes. The woman, her face etched with worry and suspicion, accuses the merchant of harboring a dark secret. She points to a particular garment amongst the haphazardly displayed clothes, claiming it belonged to a missing person. Her voice trembles with a desperate need for answer. Shizuma, ever the observant detective, notices something peculiar, a telltale mark of a bullet hole in the fabric of one of the garments. Intrigued and instantly wary, 
He demands an explanation from the seemingly unassuming merchant. The air thickens with tension as Shizuma presses the merchant for answers. They then head to the merchant's house and found a lot of clothes soaked in blood. Unable to deny the incriminating evidence, the merchant cracks under the pressure. He reluctantly reveals the existence of a mysterious hunting club. Suddenly, the merchant bolts, but determined to unravel the truth behind the hunting club, Shizuma gives chase. However, the fleeing merchant collides with a speeding carriage, his escape cut short as he is left injured and hospitalized. With the merchant incapacitated, Shizuma and his investigation take a different turn. They head to a shop named Kuraya, a place frequently visited by the elusive merchant. Inside, they meet the enigmatic owner, Kuraya himself. However, their attempts to glean information are met with resistance. Kuraya, a man with a guarded demeanor, offers no answers and rudely ushers them out. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man, Sh I'm saying. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, Hiramatsu Buhi, a man of power and influence, receives a cryptic letter. The message hints at a dark secret, the true identity of Zenbei Kuraya. The letter reveals that Kuraya's seemingly ordinary life masks a past shrouded in violence. He was once known as Masaomi Kuramoto, a ruthless samurai. Hinazuru, a woman with a past steeped in tragedy, is present as Hiramatsu reads the letter. The mention of Masayomi Kuramoto evokes a surge of painful memories. The trauma of a horrific event involving the samurai has left an indelible mark on her soul, fueling a relentless desire for justice and vengeance. Across town, in a private room, Kuraya meets with Kido Takoyoshi, a respected counselor. The exchange is tense, the air thick with unspoken threats. Kuraya demands the counselor cease any investigation into his past. However, Kido, a man of unwavering principles, refuses to yield to pressure. He declares the investigation is beyond his control, a statement that infuriates Kuraya. Despite his assumed identity as a respectable merchant, the samurai instincts within Kuraya resurface. Kuraya issues a veiled threat, leaving the counselor with a sense of unease. With no other choice, Kido reluctantly agrees to his demands. Unbeknownst to the men, Hinazuru has been a silent observer throughout their conversation, concealed as a one of the geisha present in the room. Fueled by a burning desire for revenge, Hinazuru attempts to poison both men. However, her plan is thwarted by the sudden arrival of news. Etu Shinpei has been arrested. The news throws the room into disarray, forcing Kuraya and Hinazuru to flee, while Hinazuru was left in rage after the failed attempt. Back at the hospital, the injured merchant regains consciousness. Unable to bear the weight of his secret any longer, he spills the beans, revealing Kuraya as the mastermind behind the string of brutal killings. The merchant's confession barely leaves his lips before a new horror unfolds. A doctor, appearing calm and collected moments before, approaches the hospital bed with a glint of malice in his eyes. In a swift and brutal motion, he plunges a sharp object into the merchant's body, silencing him permanently. The commotion inside the room alerts the police guarding the merchant. They rush in, only to find the lifeless body and a vanished suspect. News of the merchant's murder reaches Counselor Kido, extinguishing any hope of a legitimate investigation into Kuraya's crimes. With the only witness silenced, Kido is forced to comply with Kuraya's demands, officially closing the case. However, Shizuma, a man driven by an unwavering sense of justice, refuses to let the matter rest. The growing evidence paints a horrifying picture of Kuraya, seemingly ordinary man harboring a monstrous secret. Shizuma, alongside his close friend Hidenobu Osanai, decides to take matters into their own hands. A flashback was shown. Masaomi Kuramoto, a ruthless samurai who participated in the Boshin War, was chasing a group of women, including Hinazuru, who were caught in the crossfire. One of the women, fueled by fear and desperation, fired a shot at Kuramoto but missed. In retaliation, Kuramoto struck back, leaving Hinazuru with a permanent scar, both physical and emotional. Meanwhile, Shizuma and Osanai learn that Kuraya and his hunting club have set their sights on a new victim who was Kume, a close friend of Hinazuru's. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Shizuma and Osanai race against time to intervene. 
They arrive just as Kuraya and his associates are about to strike, disrupting their twisted game. A tense confrontation erupts, with Shizuma and Osanai's swordsmanship pitted against the brutality of Kuraya's hunting club. The commotion attracts the attention of the police, who arrive as reinforcements. Together, they manage to overpower and apprehend Kuraya and his accomplices, putting an end to their reign of terror. However, a sense of unease lingers. While justice appears to have been served with Kuraya's capture, Hinazuru remains unsatisfied. The memories of the past continue to torment her, and the fear of Kuraya's potential escape gnaws at her. Driven by a cold and calculated resolve, Hinazuru takes matters into her own hands. From a distance, she takes a precise shot, ending Kuraya's life with a single bullet. With his death, she ensures he can never inflict pain or suffering on anyone ever again. Kuraya's demise marks a turning point, but the story doesn't end there. The authorities recognize the need to dismantle the entire hunting club and eliminate any remaining threats. Goro Fujita, a skilled and relentless operative, is tasked with this mission. His target was the last remaining member of the hunting club, which is fleeing by train, desperately seeking escape. Fujita confronts the last member and ensures that he cannot continue the legacy of violence and terror. After Shuragami Kyoshiro's series of trials and tribulations, he is formally inducted into the prestigious Moriya clan. This marks a turning point in his journey, offering him a chance to solidify his position within the organization. However, his initiation is swiftly followed by a new challenge. The Moriya clan entrusts Shuragami with a crucial mission of representing them in the upcoming Gekinkai tournament. This prestigious competition attracts seasoned swordsmen from across the land, and Shuragami must prove his mettle against these formidable opponents if he wants to establish himself within the clan. Meanwhile, Shizuma Origasa, burdened by his own struggles, finds himself diverted from his usual duties. As punishment for a minor act of insubordination, he is assigned the seemingly mundane task of rounding up stray dogs. Despite his frustration, Shizuma carries out his orders with a sense of duty. While pursuing one of the elusive dogs, Shizuma encounters his comrade, Osanai, beneath a bridge. Osanai is in the midst of questioning a drunk old man, hoping to glean information about a recent sword attack. The old man, his memory clouded by alcohol, offers a crucial piece of evidence. He revealed that the attacker wielded two swords. This seemingly insignificant detail becomes vital in the investigation, leading Shizuma and Osanai closer to the truth. Their investigation takes a dark turn when they stumble upon a horrifying discovery, the lifeless body of Tachibana Yujiru, a renowned swordsman and a highly anticipated participant in the Gekinkai tournament. The manner of his death is particularly disturbing as the victim bears the signature mark of the twin swords technique. This brutal murder casts a long shadow over the upcoming Gekinkai, raising suspicions of foul play and threatening the integrity of the entire competition. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Shizuma's superiors make a covert decision. They reassign him, tasking him with infiltrating the Gekinkai as a competitor. Under this new guise, Shizuma finds himself thrust into the heart of a complex investigation. He must not only compete against some of the most skilled swordsmen in the land, but also need uncover the truth behind the recent string of attacks. News reaches the Moria clan leader that their business ventures, particularly the gambling parlors, are facing a new threat. A skilled swordsman named Yoshikawa Fuyukichi has stormed into one of their establishments, disrupting operations and exposing a cheating scheme. Yoshikawa, a man of exceptional speed and precision, effortlessly disarms and injures several Moria clan members who attempt to stop him. Just as he unleashes another devastating attack, Shuragami Kyoshiro, newly recruited member of the clan, intervenes. A tense standoff ensues, but Shuragami manages to deflect Yoshikawa's blade. Recognizing a worthy opponent, Yoshikawa issues a challenge to Shuragami. He invites him to a duel at the Gekinkai tournament, a proposition Shuragami readily accepts. Meanwhile, a sinister plot unfolds outside the purview of the Moria clan. Hiramatsu, a powerful figure locked in a bitter feud with the Moria clan over control of the opium trade, seeks revenge. Consumed by his hostility, he devises a plan to sabotage a shipment of contraband. To enact his scheme, 
Hiramatsu enlists the services of two skilled individuals, Dario, a young archer known for his deadly accuracy, and Genju, a seasoned strategist with a keen mind for planning. Together, they orchestrate an ambush aimed at a Moria clan shipment. Dario unleashes a volley of arrows, raining death upon the unsuspecting Moria clan members. However, just as they are on the verge of complete annihilation, a mysterious figure emerges. This man, known only as Mr. Fox, intervenes and saves the remaining Moria personnel along with the shipment. Despite the intervention of Mr. Fox, Hiramatsu achieves part of his objective. He deliberately leaves behind a Moria clan Hauri jacket at the scene of the ambush, hoping to frame the Moria clan for the attack. With these various strands of the narrative converging, the Gekinkai tournament commences. The preliminary rounds showcase a diverse range of competitors, each with their own unique skills and motivations. Among the remaining eight contestants are Shizuma Origasa, strategically navigating his dual roles as investigator and competitor, and Kyoshiro Shuragami, determined to prove his worth amidst seasoned adversaries. The contenders include the enigmatic twin swords wielder, Koto Nakazawa, whose precision and agility present a formidable challenge. <coughs> Posing figure of Kaijigoro Raigan, known for his sheer strength and unyielding resolve, and the foreign entrant, Blaze Miller, bringing a Western perspective to the traditional Japanese art of swordsmanship. Additionally, the seasoned veteran, Yoshikawa Fuyukichi, renowned for his speed and precision, alongside the unassuming Goro Fujita and the resilient Kutaru Takarai, round out the remaining competitors. Each brings their unique skills and motivations to the arena, setting the stage for a gripping showdown of skill, strategy, and survival. The Gekinkai tournament explodes into action with the first round. Shizuma Origasa, burdened with the weight of his secret mission to uncover the truth behind Tachibana Yujiru's murder, finds himself face to face with a formidable opponent, Kaijigaru Reagan. Reagan, a former sumo wrestler turned swordsman, cuts an imposing figure. His immense strength and towering stature inspire awe and intimidation in equal measure. As the match begins, the initial clash of wooden swords sets the tone for a brutal and intense duel. The raw power Reagan wields is undeniable, but Shizuma proves to be a more agile and adaptable opponent. Their initial exchange with wooden swords quickly escalates as the sheer force of their attacks shatters the blades. Unwilling to back down, they agree to switch to steel, but again, the steel swords shatter under their ferocious blows and the duel escalates to a raw, bare-handed struggle. Despite Reagan's overwhelming physical strength, Shizuma's unwavering determination and superior technique begin to tip the scales in his favor. Through a combination of swift dodges and precise counterattacks, Shizuma manages to exploit Reagan's vulnerabilities. The crowd erupts in a roar as Shizuma finally overpowers Reagan, securing a hard-earned victory that sends shockwaves through the tournament. The next fight commences, and Blaze Miller, the flamboyant Western swordsman, takes center stage. Overconfident and eager to showcase his prowess, he underestimates his opponent, the skilled swordswoman Koto Nakazawa. Miller's brash tactics and flashy moves prove ineffective against with surgical precision. The crowd gasps in a collective breath as Nakazawa disarms Miller with the series Nakazawa's calm and calculated approach. Her lightning-fast strikes dismantle his offense of elegant yet deadly maneuvers. Nakazawa's swift victory not only establishes her dominance, but also highlights her strategic mind. She emerges from the duel not just as a skilled fighter, but as a cunning and formidable contender with a clear shot at the championship title. Rain cascades over the tournament grounds, signaling a temporary rest from the bloodshed and tensions in the arena. But suddenly, an attempt is made on the life of Shuragami Kyoshiro, the rising star of the Moriya clan. Hinazuru, ordered by Hiramatsu, seeks to poison Shuragami. Despite her efforts, Shuragami survives the assassination attempt and was slightly poisoned. Undeterred by the assassination attempt, the tournament resumes the following day. Kutaru Takarai, a traditional swordsman wielding a versatile sickle and chain, against the enigmatic Goro Fujita. Takarai fights valiantly, his movements reflecting generations of honed swordsmanship. However, Fujita proves to be a ruthless opponent. 
His swift and precise strikes exploit any openings in Takarai's defense, culminating in a brutal display of martial prowess that ends Takarai's journey in the tournament. The tournament was then followed Shuragami faces off against a formidable opponent, Yoshikawa Fuyukichi, also known as Kamasa Shimazu, a swordsman renowned for his lightning-fast attacks. Despite being slightly weakened from the poisoning, Shuragami demonstrates a newfound determination and a surprising mastery of the twin sword technique. In a thrilling display of skill and strategy, Shuragami manages to outmaneuver Shimazu, securing a hard-fought victory and solidifying his position as a rising star within the Moria clan. Officer Makino, a man driven by greed, enters the fray. He approaches Hidenobu Osanai with a sinister proposition to eliminate Shuragami for a hefty sum of money. Osanai, who needed a money for her sister, reluctantly agrees to participate in the treacherous scheme. Unaware of the impending danger, Shizuma prepares for his next challenge, a climactic showdown against Koto Nakazawa. Driven by an unwavering pursuit of justice for Tachibana Yujiru, Shizuma steps into the arena, ready to face. As the two warriors lock eyes, the tension crackles in the air. The clash of steel resonates through the arena as Shizuma's agility and adaptability are put to the test against Nakazawa's deadly precision and unwavering focus. As the duel commences, each strike of steel resonates in the arena. Shizuma's agility and adaptability are pitted against Nakazawa's measured tactics and unwavering focus. As the duel between Shizuma and Nakazawa reaches its zenith, Nakazawa strikes Shizuma's neck using the back of his sword making him unconscious, thus winning the fight. At the same time, Makino and Osanai commence their plan, however. Their plan unravels in the face of Shuragami's vigilance and skill, resulting in Osanai's fatal wounds at Shuragami's hands. The Gekinkai tournament takes a brief pause as Shizuma Origasa and Koto Nakazawa lock eyes outside the arena. A tense exchange crackles between them, a tacit acknowledgement that neither of them unleashed their full potential during their duel. Shizuma, burdened by the weight of his dual identity, finally reveals his secret to Nakazawa. He confesses that he entered the Gekinkai not just as a competitor, but also as an undercover police officer, investigating the murder of Tachibana Yujiru. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a police officer rushing towards Shizuma with a shocking revelation. Hidenobu Osanai, Shizuma's comrade, is dead at the hands of Shuragami Kyoshiro. <laughs> Consumed by the news of Osanai's death, he abandons all pretense of composure and storms towards Shuragami, intent on a furious confrontation. Inside the tournament grounds, Shizuma launches a blistering assault on Shuragami. Blinded by rage and a thirst for vengeance, Shizuma's movements lack their usual precision. Despite his initial fury, Shizuma is unable to overpower Shuragami. The escalating duel is abruptly halted by the intervention of Goro Fujita, a quiet but formidable swordsman. Fujita asserts his claim as Shuragami's designated opponent. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. Effectively separating the two warriors. Shizuma awakens in a hospital bed, his body racked with pain. By his bedside sits Nakazawa, her expression etched with concern. She fills him in on the events he missed while unconscious. Nakazawa informs him that Fujita emerged victorious from the Gekinkai tournament. His methodical approach and unmatched precision proved superior, ultimately leading him to triumph over Shuragami. With a hint of pride, Nakazawa reveals a surprising turn of events. In a final showdown against Fujita, she emerged as the ultimate champion, claiming both the glory and the substantial cash prize awarded to the tournament winner. Meanwhile, within the Moria clan, a different kind of storm is brewing. The clan leader was furious upon learning of the construction project falling behind schedule. Gotu, filled with shame, checks the situation. But after visiting the workers who was entrusted with the project, he saw that all of them succumbed to opium addiction, significantly hindering progress. News of the Moria clan's involvement in the opium trade inside their turf spreads like wildfire. The rival Fushijima clan, feeling betrayed about the Moria clan spreading the opium, begins to make their move. Mary Blackwood, also known as Kurogi, follows Genju, a key figure within the Moria clan, and witnesses the secretive evacuation of monks. She learns of a promised ship, 
a vessel that will transport them to a sanctuary free from judgment. Kurogi's curiosity is piqued, and she becomes determined to uncover the truth behind this clandestine operation. The night descends upon the city, and the Moria clan leader grapples with the opium crisis. Just as he prepares to take action, the Fushijima clan launches a surprise attack. Overwhelmed by the sudden assault, the Moria clan leader is forced to flee, escaping by boat in a desperate bid for survival. Komei, driven by unwavering loyalty and concern, locates Hinazuru amidst the chaos. She delivers a life-altering piece of information, Shizuma, presumed dead during the Boshin War, is actually alive. This revelation stuns Hinazuru to her core, forcing her to confront the ghosts of her past. However, her attempt to visit the police barracks is thwarted when she encounters Shizuma and Nakazawa together, igniting a spark of jealousy within her. Shizuma, having recovered from his injuries, returns to his duties as a police officer. He is informed that the investigation into Shuragami's actions has concluded. To his surprise, the authorities have cleared Shuragami of any wrongdoing, deeming his actions as self-defense in the Osanai incident. Furthermore, Shizuma is ordered by Kawaji to cease his investigation into Shuragami's past. Unwilling to accept this directive, Shizuma makes a life-altering decision. He tenders his resignation from the police force, determined to pursue the truth on his own terms. Hiramatsu, fueled by a desire for revenge, orchestrates a press conference. Representatives from both the Moria and Fushijima clans are invited, ostensibly to negotiate a truce and prevent further bloodshed. Unknown to the unsuspecting clans, Hiramatsu harbors a sinister motive. He intends to use the press conference as a platform to expose Shuragami's true identity as Ikigami Shuichiru. As the press conference unfolds, a tense atmosphere hangs heavy in the air. Hiramatsu, revealing in his manipulative scheme, makes his move. He unveils evidence that seemingly proves Shuragami's true identity. The revelation sends shock through the room. Rifles are drawn, and Shuragami finds himself at the center of a gunfire. However, before the situation can escalate further, a familiar figure bursts onto the scene. Dario, the skilled archer who previously served Hiramatsu, switched allegiances and intervenes to protect Shuragami. The unexpected arrival throws the assembly into further disarray. Another masked figure emerges from the shadows. This enigmatic individual, revealed to be Gwyn, one of Shuragami's closest comrades, makes a daring move. With a swift and deadly strike, he eliminates the leader of the Fushijima clan. But amidst the gunfire, Gwen makes the ultimate sacrifice. He throws himself in front of a hail of bullets aimed at Shuragami, protecting his friend at the cost of his own life. Shuragami, Dario, and Genju find themselves cornered and overwhelmed. Hiramatsu's men close in, seemingly ready to eliminate them. Just as all hope seems lost, a beacon of hope appears on the horizon. Goro Fujita, the stoic and skilled swordsman who emerged victorious from the Gekinkai tournament, races against time to orchestrate a daring rescue mission. He arrives with a horse-drawn carriage, providing a narrow window of escape for Shuragami and his allies. They manage to board the carriage and speed away from the scene, after their daring escape orchestrated by Goro Fujita. Shuragami, Dario, and Genju find themselves deeply indebted to their unlikely savior. Shuragami, determined to shed light on the past, decides to unveil the truth about his tangled history with Hiramatsu. He launches into a narrative that stretches back six years before the downfall of their clan. The Sachu Alliance had just emerged victorious, successfully toppling the shogunate. Buhei Hiramatsu, then a cunning Western military advisor to the Aizu clan, seized upon the chaos to their advantage. Preying on the vulnerability of Suichiru Ikigami's father, Hiramatsu leveraged his position to exploit the strategic importance of the Enzo region a territory coveted by both the Aizu and Shunai clans. Masquerading as a facilitator of an alliance with Prussian military forces, Hiramatsu orchestrated an agreement that would force both clans to surrender their territory to the nascent Meiji government. However, Hiramatsu's treachery ran far deeper. Upon confirming aboard a Prussian vessel that the Aizu and Shunai clans had indeed capitulated, he unleashed a wave of betrayal. In a ruthless act of violence and deception, Hiramatsu orchestrated the execution of Suichiru Ikigami, 
and his loyal retainers, silencing any potential witness and ruthlessly consolidating his grip on power. After a brutal assault, Suichiru, gravely wounded and stripped of an eye, clung to life by sheer force of will. He miraculously emerged from the brink of death and a passing ship spotted him and rescued him. After recovering from his wounds, he encountered Genju and the ship's captain, who offered him refuge in exchange for his service. Upon returning to his hometown, Suichiru's past caught up with him. Guards, noticing the Shunei crest on his sword, apprehended him. But unwilling to surrender to his fate, he fought back and found refuge in a nearby church. Within the church walls, he encountered Gwyn, a man intending to turn him in for a reward. Gwyn overpowered by Gwyn's skills and was captured by the authorities. Suichiru, with his knack for trickery, managed to escape his cell, even aiding a young boy named Dario in his escape. News of Hiramatsu's supposed death in a shipwreck reached Suichiro, momentarily extinguishing the fire of vengeance that fueled his existence. Contemplating seppuku, a form of ritual suicide, decided that I want to die, interrupted by Genju, who intervened just in time. Gen then arrived as well, seeking a formidable opponent to test his own skills. Despite an initial clash, Suichiru's prowess ultimately earned Gwen's respect, forging an unlikely bond. Dario too became a part of their group, and thus, an unlikely alliance was born. Suichiru, Genju, Gwen, and Dario form a band of renegades. For several years, they sailed the seas, a brotherhood forged in the fires of adversity. However, the news of Hiramatsu's survival rekindled Suichiru's thirst for revenge and thus created a new persona as Shuragami. Shuragami's narration leaves a deep impression on Fujita, who empathizes with his plight. Understanding the weight of his past, Fujita pledges his strength to Shuragami's cause. Meanwhile, Shizuma, consumed by grief over Osunai's death, continues his investigation, undeterred by his resignation from the police force. His relentless pursuit of the truth leads him to a puzzling discovery that Osanai wasn't killed with just one weapon. Two distinct blades inflicted fatal wounds, one in the chest and the other in the stomach. Sumi pays Komue a final visit, handing her a significant sum of money. She bids farewell, embarking on her final mission. Meanwhile, Shizuma heard the news of her fiancé being alive and immediately rushed to see her on the racetrack. Sumi's relentless pursuit of revenge, reaching its climax at the racetrack, where she aims to deliver justice for the atrocities committed during the Boshin War. However, her bullet finds an unintended target when Shizuma Origasa leaps into harm's way to shield Toshimichi Okubo, a pivotal figure in the Meiji Restoration. The ensuing chaos is compounded by explosions that rock the racetrack, plunging the crowd into a state of panic and confusion. In the ensuing mayhem, Sumi manages to evade capture, disappearing into the shadows as law enforcement authorities scramble to piece together the orchestrated attack. Meanwhile, a seemingly innocuous investigation into a minor news story leads journalist Senri Kurogi go down a path fraught with peril and intrigue by reports of a disappearing moon and a rain of wooden carp. Amidst the aftermath of the racetrack incident, Law enforcement officials uncover damning evidence linking Buhei Hiramatsu to the nefarious plot. Intent on destabilizing the government and fomenting rebellion, Hiramatsu's clandestine machinations threaten to plunge Japan into a maelstrom of chaos and uncertainty. Despite his audacious bid for power, Hiramatsu's overtures to Katamori Matsudaira, the former lord of the Aizu domain, yield uncertain results as Matsudaira remains non-committal in the face of Hiramatsu's relentless ambition. Kurogi stumbles upon the clandestine operations of Moriya's drug manufacturing facility. To her astonishment, she discovers Genju, the steadfast ally of Shuragami Kyoshiro, held captive within the confines of the factory and saw a boxes of wooden carp, hinting a connection about her investigation. Holy Jesus, what is that? Kurogi defies the odds to liberate Gensho from captivity, setting into motion a chain of events that will reshape their intertwined destinies. Meanwhile, Shuragami Kyoshiro leads his intrepid band of warriors in a daring assault on Moriya's drug factory, 
Simultaneously, as Moria's men scramble to evacuate the contraband under the cover of darkness, a sudden conflagration erupts within the factory's confines. The blaze ignites a desperate bid by Moria's forces to cover their tracks, setting the factory ablaze in a fiery spectacle that captures the attention of Shizuma Origasa and Makino. In a gripping confrontation that tests the bounds of loyalty and honor, Shizuma confronts Shuragami with damning accusations of betrayal and murder, alleging his involvement in the demise of Haidenobu Osanai. Yet, amidst the suspicion and uncertainty, Shuragami turns the tables on Makino, leaving Shizuma puzzled. In a climactic showdown that tests the limits of their resolve, Shizuma confronts Makino, only to be met with a vicious betrayal that threatens to shatter the fragile peace of their tenuous alliance. Surviving the brutal assault with steely determination, Shizuma emerges victorious in his pursuit of justice, apprehending Makino. Shizuma Origasa delivering Makino to police headquarters, where Chief Superintendent Kawaji reveals startling revelations. It is divulged that Sumi's attempt on Toshimichi Okubo's life was orchestrated by Buhei Hiramatsu, further cementing the depths of Hiramatsu's treachery and ambition. Persuaded by Kawaji's plea, Shizuma reluctantly agrees to rejoin the police force, driven by a sense of duty and a relentless pursuit of justice. Meanwhile, despite the lack of support from the former Aizu lord, Buhei Hiramatsu remains undeterred in his audacious plan to overthrow the government. Elsewhere, amidst the tranquil solitude of the woods, Kurogi crosses paths with Goro Fujita, bearing crucial information about Hiramatsu's impending revolt. Their meeting is abruptly interrupted by the unexpected appearance of Dario. Despite losing his right arm in the failed attack on Moria's drug factory, Dario's unwavering loyalty to Shuragami Kyoshiro drives him to confront Fujita with lethal intent, unleashing a deadly arrow. Fujita managed to survive the assault and was dragged by Kurogi into safety. Amidst the turmoil and uncertainty, Chief Superintendent Kawaji bestows a momentous honor upon Shizuma Origasa, promoting him to the esteemed rank of first officer within the police force. The gesture symbolizes a testament to Shizuma's unwavering dedication and valor, underscoring his role in the ongoing struggle against corruption and betrayal. Meanwhile, as tensions escalate and loyalties are tested, Koto Nakazawa, the skilled swordswoman whose twin blades embody a legacy of strength and resilience, makes a poignant decision to return to her ancestral home. Before departing, she presents Shizuma with a cherished gift, one of her prized swords. Shizuma leads a daring raid on Hiramatsu's encampment, his squad of police officers poised for a decisive confrontation that will shape the fate of a nation on the brink of upheaval. Yet, as Shuragami Kyoshiro, Dario, and Gensho converge on the battlefield, the stakes are raised to unprecedented heights. Genju, wielding his formidable arsenal of hallucinogenic smoke, unleashes a nightmarish barrage upon the police, instilling terror and confusion amidst the ranks. However, amidst the chaos, Shizuma's unwavering resolve and steely determination prove resilient against the hallucinogenic onslaught, as he deftly wields Nakazawa's sword with precision and purpose. Genju's desperate gambit to turn the tide of battle takes a grim turn as Shizuma, undeterred by the hallucinogenic smoke, strikes him down with Nakazawa's sword. The confrontation between the two men is brutal and intense, as Gensho's determination to protect Shuragami and his cause collides with Shizuma's unyielding commitment to justice. As Genju lies mortally wounded, he makes a final, sacrificial move by setting off an explosion, using the last of his strength to ensure Shuragami's escape. The explosion rocks the encampment, causing chaos and confusion, effectively preventing Hiramatsu's troops from pursuing Shuragami and his remaining allies. In the midst of the chaos, Shizuma stands amidst the wreckage, grappling with the weight of Genju's sacrifice and the escalating conflict that threatens to engulf the nation. As the dust settles, the British Embassy receives intelligence that an imminent attack is planned on the heavily fortified Imperial Palace, with the audacious use of hot air balloons as the chosen method of assault. The news underscores the lengths to which Hiramatsu is willing to go to seize power, leveraging unconventional and daring tactics in his bid to overthrow the government. As night falls, 
The sky over the Imperial Palace is filled with the ominous silhouettes of hot air balloons, each one a harbinger of impending violence and upheaval. Shuragami, driven by a resolute determination to thwart Hiramatsu's plans, takes a daring leap aboard one of the ascending balloons. In the darkened skies above, Shuragami's presence aboard the balloon is a symbol of hope and defiance, a solitary figure poised to confront the forces of ambition and betrayal that threaten to plunge the nation into chaos as the balloons drift closer to the Imperial Palace. On the ground, Shizuma follows the balloons on foot, his resolve unshaken despite the daunting odds and the perilous journey ahead. Every step brings him closer to the epicenter of the unfolding conflict, where the fate of the nation hangs in the balance. With the shocking news that Saigu Takamori, the revered samurai, has been assassinated, Toshimichi Okubo, a key government figure, learns of Saigu's demise and immediately suspects Buhei Hiramatsu's involvement. Hiramatsu's aim is clear, to incite anti-government sentiment among the Satsuma samurai and destabilize the fragile peace. Meanwhile, the sky over the Imperial Palace is filled with hot air balloons, a daring and unconventional assault orchestrated by Hiramatsu. Shizuma Origasa, ever vigilant and determined, manages to climb aboard one of the balloons. Simultaneously, Dario takes decisive action against Maria's balloon. With expert precision, he fires an arrow that strikes true, bringing the balloon crashing down. Amidst the chaos, Shuragami Kyoshiro confronts Moria, demanding answers and forcing a confession from him. Cornered, Moria reveals that Hiramatsu is waiting offshore on a ship, expecting his men to return with the Emperor as their captive. The plan, however, begins to unravel when Shizuma intercepts Hiramatsu's men as they land, accompanied by Sumi. The confrontation is tense, with Shizuma's resolve tested against the loyal and ruthless henchmen of Hiramatsu. Amidst the melee, Chief Superintendent Kawaji arrives with reinforcements, tipping the scales in favor of Shizuma and his allies. In the ensuing chaos, Shizuma seizes the opportunity to grab Sumi and flee, his determination to protect her driven by a profound love and respect for who she truly is. As Moria returns to his headquarters, he is met with a scene of devastation. His once formidable stronghold is in ruins, and only his lieutenant, Ginji Goto, remains. Goto, heavily bandaged and grievously injured from severe burns, faces Moria in a poignant moment of reckoning. In a final act of betrayal and desperation, Gotau kills his disgraced leader, marking the end of Maria's reign of terror. In a bid to prevent further bloodshed and honor the memory of the fallen, Shizuma and Sumi seek an audience with Katamori Matsudaira. They implore him to abandon thoughts of revenge for the Aizu, appealing to his sense of justice and the greater good. However, their plea is tragically interrupted by an unexpected attack. Hiramatsu's swordsman, lurking in the shadows, fires a shot that fatally wounds Sumi. In a heartbreaking moment of loss and fury, Shizuma retaliates with lethal precision, spearing his sword into the assailant as Sumi breathes her last. Driven by a mix of grief and unyielding resolve, Shuragami and Shizuma both set their sights on Hiramatsu's ship. Shuragami boards the vessel first, only to be confronted by Ginji Gotu, who is now under the influence of opium. The ensuing battle is brutal and chaotic, as Shuragami fights against Goto's drug-fueled rage and strength. Meanwhile, Hiramatsu suddenly appeared, followed by Shizuma. Shuragami demanded to fight against Hiramatsu and left Gotou in Shizuma's hand. In the midst of the storm-tossed deck, Shizuma battles the opium-induced fury of Ginji Gotu. The fight is a visceral clash of skill and sheer willpower as Shizuma faces the deranged strength of his opponent. Despite Gotu's drug-enhanced resilience, Shizuma showcased his experience in the battlefield and precision. With a final, decisive strike, he defeats Gotu, who collapses in a heap, his body succumbing to the ravages of both his injuries and the drugs coursing through his veins. Meanwhile, Shuragumi confronts Buhei Hiramatsu in a tense and emotionally charged encounter. Shurugami and Hiramatsu showcase both of their swordsmanship and seem toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. However, Shurugami managed to find an opening and strike his back. After defeating Gotu, Shizuma arrived at the scene and witnessed Hiramatsu coming seppuku. 
but Shuragami given him mercy and was buried in middle of the fire. Shizuma and Shuragami continued their awaited fight. As the battle rages on, Shuragami and Shizuma's paths finally converge on the deck of the ship. The two warriors, once allies in the fight against Hiramatsu, now find themselves at odds. Shizuma, bound by his duty as a police officer, attempts to arrest Shuragami for his past crimes. Shuragami, however, refuses to be taken in, his sense of honor and justice compelling him to continue his own fight. The ensuing duel is a breathtaking display of skill and determination, each man pushing the other to their limits. In the midst of their fierce battle, Hiramatsu, wounded but not yet defeated, staggers onto the deck. With a final act of defiance, he raises his weapon and fires a shot that strikes Shuragami. The impact is devastating, and Shuragami, mortally wounded, collapses to the deck. As the dust settles and the echoes of battle fade, the surviving characters are left to grapple with the aftermath of their choices and the sacrifices made along the way. Amidst the somber aftermath, a glimmer of hope emerges. Kuma, a key ally in the fight against Hiramatsu, introduces her newborn daughter, named Sumi, in honor of the fallen heroine. The naming of the child symbolizes a new beginning and the enduring legacy of those who fought for justice and peace. The narrative shifts to the British Embassy, where intelligence reveals that the ship that Shuragami has built does not lead to a land of gold, but a secret village, and people there are living free, despite indifference of status and religion. Shizuma makes a life-altering decision, weary from the relentless pursuit of justice and the personal losses he has endured. He resigns from the police force, determined to find his own peace and a sense of purpose beyond the battles and bloodshed.